hello, 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 everyone. And welcome back to the Miscellaneous Debris Podcast with me, your host, the Mad Chatter, Ryan MK. That's right. Thank you for joining. Do not forget to keep an eye on my social medias at the Mad Chat. Oh, I'm sorry. At RMK Madness. What am I talking about? At RMK Madness. <laughs> Great way to start off trying to give out wrong information. It is what it is. Keep an eye on that. Uh, it has been not that things have been kind of slow. I'm not going to lie. I have had a rough, rough, rough time. <clears throat> adjusting to the new work. But it, it, and I really like the new job. I get to play with marijuana. It's fantastic. I mean, as far as jobs go, eventually I'd like to do this creative stuff, writing and podcasting and stand-up. Eventually, I'm hoping to do that full-time, you know, make a little bit of a name for myself. And maybe that happens, maybe it doesn't. But if it doesn't, it's nice to know I'm in the marijuana industry where maybe I can, some good things can come from that as opposed to, you know, the restaurant fucking industry. I said, fuck it. I got a lot of stand up material on the restaurant industry because it's, it's one of the only jobs where you get punished the better you are at the job. Like the better of a cook you are, the more likely you are to work on weekends, right? That's a punishment. I mean, it's just, the, 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 oh. there's so much shit. And I find it funny how during, you know, 2020, when we were doing lockdowns and quarantines and how all of a sudden, even though we get paid like shit in the restaurant industry, all of a sudden we're essential. Assholes. <laughs> Sorry, just think about all the assholes, whether it's delivering pizzas or just working in the restaurant. I've waited tables. I've done all sorts of shit. The best really is in the kitchen because you don't have to deal with people, but then that's really the least pay for probably the most work. It sucks. I've been in management. And much like everywhere else in our country, you know, where they try and manipulate you and brainwash you and use funny language. I call it manager speak because there's a whole way they go about. Anytime you look at something, they try and explain it to you in a way like it's not that bad. Look, this is why it's like you go fuck yourself. <laughs> and see, I've always had managers try and pull their manager speak bullshit on me, but it doesn't work on me because I've been there. I've learned it. And I just, I want nothing to do with the restaurant industry. I enjoy cooking okay, but I'm just tired of doing the restaurant thing. I'd do it if I could run my own place, but I've done that before. I think I might've told this story during my addiction, uh, the, the podcast with my addiction story. I might've told about the time that I got a restaurant with the uh, started a restaurant with some dudes from my AA club, older guys that had been around for a little bit. And event, essentially, uh, I was trying to do them a solid by putting the shit in my name, right? Because they didn't want, they were using their social security money to help get this shit started because they were basically the financiers, right? And I was the man with all the knowledge and experience. But I quickly realized they were more worried about getting some gambling machines in there and running some illegal, like, <laughs> you know, cherry machines and whatnot, shit like that, as opposed to the restaurant was more of a cover. And so it, it turned into a fucked up thing. And and uh, it's a big reason why I don't go to AA meetings, because of the, the other people in that club, it just, it, they were supposed to. To, you know, lambaste these fuckers for the way they acted, the way they treated me. I didn't fucking do anything wrong. I was nice enough to put the shit in my name because of, of the, the situation. And uh, and it's not a decision I came across lately. I tried to, I really thought dudes in AA that have been around for a little bit, I could trust them. They were older guys, you know, 
I thought I could trust him. I was wrong, got screwed. And really it just, it, the idea of trying to do that again, it's like, ah, and I'm sure I, if I ever tried again, it'd be in a much better situation, but it, 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 no, I, I just don't want to anymore. I, I don't want anything to do with restaurants or working in them. So to be out of it, to be out of that hell in, in such an underappreciated environment, no matter where you go. I, I mean, I've worked in very few restaurants that were like fairly solid all the way around. Generally, there's some kind of bullshit or another. And that, it's like that with a lot of jobs. But, you know, the wife and I were talking about how much recently about how much so much of this crap doesn't matter. You know, like, if you think about it, our time here as as humans on Earth, life. In the grand scheme of things, it's just a speck of time. And it really means nothing. It really is pretty insignificant. But we try and leave our marks and change the world while we're here. And even then, that may not mean anything. Because it, who knows when the next extinction level event's going to come along, whether it's because of global warming or a meteor or whatever it is. It, you know, at some point, Earth is going to get rocked with a catastrophe again. And there's a good chance uh, that humans are done. And if we find a way to not be done, I mean... <sighs> It's just, it, it just feels like, ah, such a mess. You look at our country, country's kind of a mess. We'll get into that. But I mean, just the world in general, you wonder why aliens don't want to fucking come down and talk to us. I don't, I just, it, it, in a way, yeah, it's, we're so insignificant. It doesn't mean anything. But then again, while we're here, it, you know, maybe in the grand scheme of things, we don't matter. And a lot of this doesn't matter, but to us, to human beings, to our species and, and the world we've created and the, what we're trying to build, what we're trying to work towards the legacy we want to leave any of that shit, it, you know, it is important. It does matter. And we just have to try and do our part. And I really don't honestly believe that we were meant to just fucking work ourselves to this has been going on for years, centuries. I mean, people, uh, you think back to the times of the Egyptian, we're going to get into some Egypt history here in one of the pods, but you look back, you talk about, I mean, sure, you could get into the discussion of UFOs and aliens, how the pyramids were built, et cetera, et cetera. But if you look at that whole society, I mean, it's all been that from from back then to now, you got the people at top in power, you got the workers. And I'm just like, you know, sure. There is plenty of people who are basically only good for work. <laughs> there's just some, you know, no offense, but they, there's just some people, not the brightest, they're worker bees. But <clears throat> There's a lot of people, I believe, and I'd like to consider myself one of them, who could contribute more to society, but are, are stuck being worker bees. And I just don't, I don't know. It just, I'm sure a lot of people feel like they should be doing something more than they are. But I also believe some of those people are right. Not everybody is. Because not everybody, you know, we still do need worker bees in a sense. So it's, I don't know, it's weird. I saw something on Twitter about, you know, humans could be just hanging out, eating grapes, staring at the stars, shit like that. Uh, you know, instead we're dealing with taxes and, and, you know, we're working 40, 50 hour work weeks and all this crazy shit. Like, it's true. I mean... It's crazy to think about, you know, I mean, technologically and, and, you know, you look at medically and educationally in some, so many different areas, we are vastly improved, you know, but there's some other areas of society where things just, I 
don't know. Anyway, apologies. I'm going to digress a little bit. Got into a huge rant that I'm just talking about work because I did, I've had a little bit of trouble, uh, you know, getting into this routine, you know, because I hadn't worked for a little while. And then, of course, I do start working. And uh, sorry, there's a weird sound that just started somewhere in the house. It stopped. I think. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting distracted now. But uh, I, it has been a little rough getting into the routine, you know, um, because the way, again, I like the job and the shift's really not bad. Four 10 hour days, I can handle that. I would rather have three days off and I don't mind working 10 hours at all. And it's really broken up nicely the way we get our two 15 minute breaks or half hour break. It's all nice and broken up. So I work for a couple hours break, work for a couple hours break. It's nice. But the problem is I got to wake up super extra early. It takes me some time to get going. Not really to get going. I can get up and go if I need to, but I like to, you know, take my time, smoke some weed. Got to let it come down a little bit before I hit the road. Don't want to hit the road to work, being blasted. I smoke a little weed. I got to take a nice big shit. You know, I got to get ready for the day. I like to get ready for the day. I like to take some time doing that. And then, you know, it's a good 25 minute drive to work. And uh, it's, closer to 40 on the way home due to traffic. So you add in, you know, an hour of get ready time, an hour of driving or so, and you're looking at a 12 hour day, right? So it's just kind of getting used to that because, you know, for months I was not working. I was hanging out with my family and working on my creative shit a lot. <laughs> and now with, I don't have the time as much to work on my creative stuff. So I'm still trying to figure out, I, I am finally getting used to this new routine, but it's just trying to figure out now, how do I attack all of my creative stuff and everything else I want to do and still have time to hang out with the family when I'm not working, you know? So it's kind of trying to figure out now that I'm getting used to this uh, new work schedule, this work routine. Now, now just the whole you know, life routine. I, I just kind of got to get in order, but we'll get there. We'll get there. So keep an eye, keep an eye on the social because I'll get it picked back up. We'll get some, you know, a what the fuck out there, a crazy shit about space. I'm actually going to try and get that done tonight or tomorrow, maybe, but uh, full disclosure, again, recording Sunday night, even though this will come out Monday morning, you know, you know the drill. Uh, so you may get some crazy shit about space tomorrow. We'll see how it goes. But uh, I hope you've all been well. Now that I've rambled a bunch, I apologize. I was All I really meant to say was, uh, you know, talk about how much I enjoyed the new job, but it was difficult getting into the routine and developing, you know, a, a, a new schedule for everything I do. And uh, it's just been kind of slow, but I'm going to get things back. To, and then I just went off on a tangent about, you know, life and how we should, we're not meant to work to ourselves to death. Like that should, like life should be so much, I, I just, oh, blah, blah, blah. but I digress again. <laughs> As I said, hope you've been well. It's been pretty good here at the Madhouse MK. Uh, another birthday this week. I mentioned that last week. Yeah, Draven, my uh, middle child. He turned seven. Got some pretty cool stuff. A Connects Pac-Man roller coaster thingy. He got to a sleeping bag, which he, he had a sleeping bag. And it was a Kylo Ren one. But, but so it's red. A lot of red and black. Well, the youngest, Renly, he just had his birthday. <clears throat> just turned four and uh he is a big fan of the color red and draven mr draven well he's a big fan of the color green so with him having a red sleeping bag he's like i would really like a green one so he got a green one for it's a mandalorian one with baby yoda on it and it's green so he digs it and then uh he handed down his red Kylo Ren one to Mr. Renly, who now has a red one. So he, both boys are excited. But man, speaking of Renly, the little guy, 
he got so damn excited about his big brother's presence. It was ridiculous. He was more excited about his big brother's presence than he was, than the big brother was, Draven. So it was pretty interesting. Um, but he got some Minecraft stuff shirt and a, and a stuffy. He got a sleeping bag. Oh, and then he got some Minecraft Legos, Minecraft dungeon Legos, mind you. Redstone golem and a redstone monstrosity. You might not know what the hell that is, but being that I have two boys that are heavily into Minecraft, I kind of know what it is. And, you know, I got to say, as far as Legos go, I'm a big fan of Legos. If you haven't heard before, you should check out the collection. I've got my shit, pictures of it on my Instagram. So check it out there at RMK Madness. But we've got a huge display, Lord of the Rings stuff, The Hobbit. Uh, We got the Friends Coffee House. We have a shit ton of Batman stuff. Um, Harry Potter. We got the Hogwarts Castle and the Weasley's House. We've got a ton of shit. But the boys have been collecting the Minecraft sets and they are just fucking cool, man. They're just fucking cool. And this new one is really cool. This redstone monstrosity, this big stone lava demon monster thingy. (laughs) It's pretty cool shit. I got to admit, it's pretty cool shit. So had a very good birthday. That was uh, on Thursday. Um, Other than that, lots of, you know, sports watching the basketball and the hockey and uh, the NHL we're in the west we're in the with the, we're in the conference finals right in the west you got the Islanders and the Lightning New York and Tampa Bay and they're tied two games apiece so we're down to three games best of three right here so we'll see how that goes the winner of that will play the winner of the Knights and the Canadians Las Vegas Knights Montreal Canadiens, and uh, the Canadians just lost a game last night, or tonight, if you want to be relevant. And <clears throat> it's a damn shame because they had a chance to go up three games to one on the Knights in the series, and they couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. So both of those series are tied at two. Very good hockey going on, uh, but we're getting close to the Stanley Cup Finals. We're nearing the end, as we are in basketball where we are also approaching the conference finals. As a matter of fact, uh, on Sunday, yesterday, or today, whatever, (laughs) the Clippers and the Suns, Los Angeles Clippers, Phoenix Suns, they began the Western Conference Finals. Phoenix took game one. They're up one to nothing. And then you had game seven between Atlanta and Philadelphia. The game was fantastic. It was insane, as was the Bucks and uh, Nets game seven, um, which was really crazy because Kevin Durant hit a shot at the end of the game to tie it and send it into overtime. And his foot was just barely on the three point line, literally an inch backward, that foot an inch backward. And that's a three pointer, not a two pointer. The Nets move on as it is. The Bucks moved on, and then, and then the Hawks ended up beating the 76ers in their Game 7. So in the East, two great Game 7s, and we're left with the Milwaukee Bucks and the Atlanta Hawks. And that series will begin in a couple of days. So very exciting, nearing the end of the playoffs, and then we'll be sitting around waiting for football to start, you know, unless you're a baseball fan, which I, I, I am very, very loosely – uh, I like the Twins and Rockies, obviously, if you know, I'm a bit of a Minnesota guy on top of being a Colorado boy. So uh, I do root for some Minnesota teams, but um, yeah, I just uh, I just can't get into the long season. The boy baseball is now. It's just kind of like blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and they're one of the worst leagues as far as trying to, you know, evolve. They just they, they do a terrible job. So not so big on base, but. A lot of stuff coming up with New Japan Pro Wrestling. We got some good shows coming up. Um, Man, I don't know if you all know, if you're a fan of the New Japan, but uh, Shingo Takagi is now the New Japan Pro Wrestling World Heavyweight. The IWGP World Heavyweight Champion is Shingo after beating Kazuchika Okada. That was a really good show. Good match. It's great to see 
uh, a guy like Shingo, who I've always feel like guys like that, like a Tomohiro Ishii, they're very underrated. And it's nice to see him get some recognition and a, and a spin with the bell. So that's cool. That's cool. And I apologize for anybody who doesn't give a shit about sports, but I talk a little here. You know, I talk. This is a miscellaneous debris. It's some miscellaneous shits that I talk about, and uh, I'm gonna talk whatever hits my fancy. And uh, just now, that was sports. But so you can watch your baseball, this, the playoffs coming to an end, hockey and basketball, and then you can watch your baseball. Or if you're like me, you'll be watching some New Japan Pro Wrestling, and we're all waiting for the football season to start. I've also been listening to a lot of stand-up comedy. As I mentioned, I'm going to get out there, hit the open mics, which was my plan pre-COVID situation, right? And so we're going to try that again this summer. Is going to do it last summer and should hit the fan. COVID should hit the fan. So uh, we're going to try it again this summer, even though COVID shit could hit the fan again. We'll get into that later too. <laughs> but I've been, you know, working on some new material, trying to figure out how to approach uh, that because where I'm going to go is Comedy Works in Denver, one of the better comedy clubs in the entire country. And for open mic night, when it's your very first time, you only get one minute. And I, I might have talked about this on a pod before, but one minute, that's tough. I'm not going to lie. I, I do a bit of storytelling in, in my jokes, and it, it's it's a minute that, that would be one joke. So I got to figure out how to approach this if I want to do it a little bit more Anthony Jeselnik, Mitch Hedberg style with shorter, you know, quicker to the punchline jokes. Or, you know, I got to figure out how to attack that one minute. Now, after the first time you do that one minute, then... You can go on to five minutes and I can kill five minutes. Really, if you give me 20 minutes, I feel like I can knock it out the fucking park. Less time, I feel like I need more time. So I got to do the best I can in less time. And with a minute, that's not a lot of time to impress. But I want to try and figure out a way to do it so I can make my mark. So people fucking remember me when I go up there the second time. So that's the idea. But first, we also got to go. Me and the wife, we're going to take a night and go uh, watch some comedy there and open mic night and just see get a feel for the flow you know what i mean the flow of the show what kind of jokes people are doing what kind of jokes turn people off because i got some political shit maybe i don't hit that so much uh until i get a little more name for myself so i gotta figure out how to approach all of this because i also want to be the mr don't give a fuck guy because i kind of am so I've also been listening to a lot of stand-up because it's very inspirational. I don't really get like obviously ideas for material for it, but I do like listening to it because it inspires me because I hear all these comedians. I'm like, that's really good stuff. You know, I got to work on some of this to make it as sharper. Like, I guess in a way it gives me ideas, but not in the sense where I'm like taking material or using material in any way from somebody else. It might just maybe how they structure a joke or how they approach something or, you know, I don't know. It's hard to explain, but mostly I'm, I'm paying attention because I don't want to, you know, unintentionally rip off anybody's shit. So that's always my biggest fear is when I'm thinking, because there's so many comedians, there's been so much comedy throughout the history of time. How do I know? How do I haven't heard all of it? Obviously. How do I know what jokes have been told and what ones haven't? I don't. So keep listening to stand up. I appreciate the art of it, you know. But I come across some names, and not names I had never heard before necessarily, except for maybe one. But I was I really found some guys I, I was unaware of uh, just their material and what how good it was. But Tommy Jonigan is one of them. Shane Moss, that's another one. There's also a female comedian I came across, and it's really weird. I when I listen to an album, I'll be listening to stand up at work and you get done with an Apple or an album on Apple music. And then it just goes into like a random selection of like related tracks. So if you're listening to a comedy album, it'll just go into related, you know, bits, tracks of different comedians came across this uh, female comedian and man, she had me laughing. And then I tried to find out when I got to a break at work, 
who it was and I couldn't figure it out. It was a bummer, but she was really good. So I'm hoping to come across her again. <laughs> but Shane Moss, Ben Bailey. If you don't know Ben Bailey, there was a show once upon a time called Cash Cab. It was actually quite fun. Ben, the cab driver, would uh, pick up people and inside the cab was lights and stuff. And it was just like built almost like a game show arena. And he'd get in there. They'd get in there and the lights would go off. You're in the cash cab. And they'd start doing questions as he drove them to the destination. And you could win money. Well, I didn't know this dude was also a stand-up comedian. And uh, so listening to it. It's some pretty funny stuff. So I, I kind of like the Ben Bailey stuff. I, I wonder he might, uh, uh, I'll have to check out some of his newer stuff. There's a couple of jokes that made me go, oh, I don't know. This guy might not be one of us, one of the good guys. <laughs> he might not be, but I might have to check out some of his. But the one album I did listen to, it, it was good. And also on Netflix, there's a there's a Jim Jeffries special that, I, that it came out in 2020. I had no fucking clue. No fucking clue. What a bummer that there's been new Jim Jeffries on Netflix for a year and I didn't know about it. What a fucking bummer. Fucking bummer. But I recommend that as well. And of course, of course, last but not least, uh, since we last spoke, Sunday, Sunday, yesterday, today, however you want to look at it, again, <laughs> it's Father's Day. So happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. And uh, all the single moms who had to do both jobs, you know, happy Father's Day to you too. I know you get Mother's Day and Mother's Day, let's face it, that's always such a bigger deal than Father's Day. I'm not sure why. I mean, of course, women do the hard part when it comes to the, getting the kids uh, because they have to grow the kid and then and then get the kid out. And that's not fun. And that shit kicked my, ass, my wife's ass, right? <sighs> Full disclosure, she got kind of lucky on our second, our youngest. Uh, that was a very rough and scary delivery. And uh, so, yeah, that shit's, the, you know, of course, give women all the credit. But it also does feel like Father's Day does 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 get shit on a little bit. <laughs> but that's okay. because That's okay for me. Other dads really might take it to heart. Like, Ooh. But for me, it's okay because I don't want a bunch of attention. I just kind of want to just chill and what do you want to do for Father's Day? Not a fucking thing, but nothing. I'm going to sit here, watch watch fucking basketball and hockey. I'm going to chill and have a pizza. <laughs> I also watched the Mr. Bean. Fuck, let me tell you, I love it still. It holds up. It holds up. I very much, if you don't know Mr. Bean... Rowan Atkinson, fantastic. Go watch this shit. Just go watch it. Check it out. I highly recommend it. It still is great. He's his. I just want to watch because I have the whole Mr. Bean series of the show on DVD. And I just want to rewatch every episode and episode and just keep rewatching and just study his face because he does the greatest things with his face, the greatest facial features, looks, uh, just everything. He's fantastic. So it still holds up. And we were watching some of the first episodes. Normally I put in like the second or third disc because I had some of the best episodes with like the Christmas one. Oh man, the Christmas Miss, and Merry Christmas, Mr. Bean. Such a great episode. But th it, there's some really good ones that I hadn't watched as much. And uh, like some of the beginning episodes, some of the later episodes and some of the beginning ones are great. And just some of the jokes in it, like it, it I, th I believe it's the very first episode um of the show like entirely so he decides to go to the beach and apparently mr bean's gonna go ahead and swim in the water but he goes down in his normal like uh you know office suit looking type attire <laughs> trousers button-up shirt tie doesn't have the overcoat just goes down like that and he's getting ready to change into his swimming trunks. And he realizes there's a man in a chair next to him. 
The man's wearing sunglasses and keeps looking over at him every time he tries to get. So eventually, Mr. Bean puts the suit on, the swimming suit on, over his pants. <laughs> and then he tries to take his pants off and slide them out, and which he does. And he's trying to do this. Meanwhile, the guy in the chair keeps looking over like, what the fuck is going on with this guy? And he ends up getting the pants out and he's good to go, ready to swim. And then the guy gets up from the lawn chair and he grabs one of those sticks that blind people have because he's fucking blind. (laughs) So Mr. Bean just went through all the trouble of doing that, putting, taking his pants off with his swim trunks on he went through the whole process of doing that not having needed to (laughs) such a great joke right there i loved it but yeah just kind of hung with the family relaxed uh we actually went outside and washed uh my mother's car she came she came to town for the uh the little guy's birthday and uh to just hang out and so we washed her car and then um you know just hung out and played outside for a bit and then just chilled and watched tv i mean it's a good day my kind of day my kind of (sighs) day but what else has been going on in the country the world well some good stuff has happened since we last talked but mainly i focus on that Biden officially made Juneteenth a federal holiday. And I say it's about time. If you don't know Juneteenth, that commemorates the end of slavery, okay? And it's very cool that this happened. Again, long overdue. It's something that's been celebrated for years, started in a little town, Texas. This is something very important to the Black community. And so it's great that this this is now, this is more progress, okay? Because, you know, we're getting some Confederate statues taken down. We're making this a holiday. There is a shift. And I, I think part of it is Trump and everybody else and how much it's been in the public eye and how much you can see that right, the extreme right, you really, that, their whole ideals have been put to the forefront and there's even some Republicans that can't back some of that shit up. So, I mean, we're making some progress, continuing to make progress. And I think it's especially important as we have Republican states uh, looking to do things like eliminate critical race theory from schools. Um, I mean, I just don't, they that scared of, minorities getting power i mean that's that's what it feels like to me just racist shit and critical race theory if you're unfamiliar it's basically examining how the law intersects with issues of race how there's still elements of you know white supremacy in power and and how there's you know structural racism still in place and though we've made progress it's still there and it just looks at all these things what can we do to better it and and uh yeah they don't want some states yeah they don't want that time schools anymore because they'd rather go with the narrative that uh oh all that shit paints us out as bad well, everybody has some bad shit. And I say again, it's it would be like, you know, Germany just completely fucking trying to ignore Nazism and Hitler. And it's just, it's stupid. Just stupid. They must be quite full of hate, you know, to feel this type of way about black people and not have any sympathy for their plight, their ancestors' plight, what we as white people have put them through. And yeah, we get it. You didn't own any black slaves. I didn't own any black slaves. That doesn't mean there isn't 
atonement to be made. I don't even understand the issue. Black people, African Americans, were treated like shit in the past, and they're still getting getting treated like shit today in this country because there's still a lot of people that for some fucking reason feel like not just black people, but minorities in general are beneath them. Makes me sick. It's also not a surprise because a lot of these people that would have a problem with critical race theory or live in the places that where uh, you know, it's red states, obviously. And a lot of the people that live in the places that they want it to happen. Shit, just where I live. Just where I live. Oh, no, I guess it's not where I live. I'm getting it confused with something. <laughs> but I read about there is some places out there that literally were like, if you don't like. You can opt out, basically, of learning about black history. That's some racist ass shit. I don't know why I had it tied to here because it's not happening here. <laughs> but th there's some real shit. There are really fucking people who don't want their kids learning about black history because they believe in their minds, in their minds. That's enough. That's enough. We don't need to talk about this shit. Slavery, race. We don't need to talk about that shit anymore. Not understanding how important it is to address this shit so that history does not repeat itself. But it's been repeating itself because we still haven't fully gotten rid of the racism in this country. And it may never, ever go away. But fuck. I just... And many of these people, you know, on the right... Many of these people brandishing those Confederate flags, which again, I will say for the millionth time, I do not understand how these fucking assholes support something that was so short-lived, that was a group of fucking traitorous, racist, bastard losers. I mean, that, that losers. Losers, losers. That's exactly what they are. Losers, traitors, and uh, you know, really not meaningful in any way. Didn't last very long. I, the Confederacy. Oh, they're racist. That's that's why they still support that shit. Yeah, that's right. That's right. They would probably like to go back to having black people as slaves. I could see that. <clears throat> Definitely, that's the reason. And many of these people are also fucking QAnon fuckheads, right? You got the new, <laughs> the new theory that uh, Trump, he's going to be back in August. He's going to be back in the White House. That's right. That, uh, you know, Lindell, the but my pillow guy, Trump's buddy, apparently he said something about Trump getting into the White House in August. And then, you know, Trump and QAnon and others were, uh, you know, pushing that along and and which is completely fucking insane and not going to happen. <clears throat> Apologies, my blunt keeps going out. <laughs> So this is happening, right? Got people believing in this now. And then it comes out that Trump releases tour dates in December. He's going on tour with Bill O'Reilly. This is going to be great for all the Trumpers, except, except he's not doing that shit if he's in the White House. He's supposed to be back in the White House in August. Well, what's going on there? Huh? Q and honors? Huh? You Q fuckheads? What's going on here? Huh? Isn't he supposed to be back in the White House by then? So what's he doing making tour dates, huh? Amazing. Just amazing. How many of those fuckheads call us sheep? A sheep. 
because we don't believe in their conspiracies. But here they are getting lied to over and over and over again. (laughs) And they keep coming back to the shit and they keep praising Trump. He's the savior. (laughs) Ah. You know, I don't know that we'll ever really have to worry about Trump again. But what he started, this movement, and the way his supporters are willing to go to the extreme, I don't think that shit's going away. And if Trump disappears, someone will take his spot. We just got to hope they're not uh, so much smarter than Trump. Because that could, in fact, could in fact spell trouble for the country. Speaking of trouble for the country. Uh, Vaccinations are declining. The rate's declining. Uh, Biden was hoping to hit 70% by Independence Day. Not looking likely. Not looking likely. Which is unfortunate. And what you're seeing is, in these states with high vaccination rates, COVID is becoming less and less of a problem. Cases dropping, hospitalizations dropping. Many of these blue states, democratic states. Now, then you have the red states where many Republicans have backed Trump and pushing the COVID's no big deal, all that narrative. And, and it's funny how even though all of them have gotten vaccines themselves, they don't seem to be pushing their uh, citizens to do the same. And so these red states, a lot of them have low vaccination rates because uh, not a lot of, not as many are getting vaccinated. And, and uh, therefore, COVID's not going away. <laughs> so you basically, have another instance of a divided country. Scientists, health officials, fear of a big divide of essentially two Americas. You know me, I'd rather refer to it as, uh, you know, two United States, or we could just call it the divided states of America. That's what we could, that's what we should call. We should just reference ourselves from here on out for a while till this shit is fixed. The divided states of it, because we are certainly not united. And with this big divide, It could get ugly, particularly because of the Delta variant entering the picture. And again, this is something else that should not be surprising. Not be surprising at all. You have assholes out there like Cole Beasley, who he's a football player. And here, let me just read. He's he because see in the NFL they're trying to get people vaccinated and and they're ba- they're basically they're not saying you have to, but essentially the teams that do get vaccinated that have you know most, I believe it's like eighty five percent of their players vaccinated. Those teams are going to have far fewer restrictions. You know they're going to be a lot freer, a lot more like pre COVID. You know and. Uh, These teams that don't have that 85%, well, (laughs) it's uh, they're going to have trouble because they're basically going to have to do shit like they were doing it last year, COVID protocols and everything. Now, Cole Beasley is completely against all this. He doesn't think it's fair. Uh, He believes he has a right, but this is his defense. And uh, okay, this is what he put on Twitter. Uh, Of course, it was screenshots from his... um, 
his notes application on his iPhone. But it says, look, I'm going to live my one life like I want to regardless. Everyone, I'm Cole Beasley and I'm not vaccinated. I will be outside doing what I do. I'll be out in the public. If you're scared of me, then steer clear or get vaccinated. Point blank, period. I may die of COVID, but I'd rather die actually living. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. I got vaccinated. Am I not actually living? Am I living any different than you? I mean, probably because you have a shit ton of money, so you can do whatever. (sighs) Fucking asshole. Yeah, I got vaccinated, so my life is over. I'm not actually living anymore because I got vaccinated. He says... I have family members whose days are numbered. If they want to come see me and stay at my house, then they're coming regardless of protocol. I don't play for the money anymore. My family has been taken care of. Find me if you want. My way of living and my values are more important to me than a dollar. That's fine. That's okay. I respect that aspect right there. I love my teammates and enjoy playing ball because all the outside BS goes out the window in those moments. I just want to win the Super Bowl and enjoy these relationships that will be created along the way. I'm not going to take meds for a leg that isn't broken. I'd rather take my chances with COVID and build my immunity that way. Eat eat better, drink water, exercise, and do what I think is necessary to be a healthy individual. That is my choice based on my experience of what I think is best. Stop again. I'm not going to take meds for a leg that isn't broken. Okay, so do you not wear a seatbelt? Why wear a seatbelt for a car accident that hasn't happened? You're doing the same. I'd rather take my chances with go eat better, drink water, exercise, and do what I think is necessary. You're you're still doing preventative, like okay, Cole Beasley. Why practice for a game that hasn't happened yet? Fucking asshole. Build up my immunity that way. Okay, you're not considering that other people around you might not have the greatest immunity. Okay. You tell them to get vaccinated. So you go ahead and live your way. Go ahead, but don't give a fuck about anybody else. Okay. He says, I'll play for free this year to live life. How I've lived it from day one. If I'm forced into retirement, so be it. I've enjoyed the times I've had. I'll get to live freely with my wife, kids, and extended family forever. We get to enjoy the times that we miss from the sacrifices we've had to make just so I could play this wonderful game. So either way, it's a win-win. That's where I stand. And it goes on, blah, blah, blah. It's crazy how football players will put, uh, you know, horse tranquilizers and steroids and all sorts of different shit in their body to play the game of football, but a vaccine, which would not only benefit you, but a lot of people. He also, I noticed on one of his Twitter posts was talking about, I think it was replying to somebody else, but everybody's so into science nowadays. Whatever happened to God's will. This is where the stupidity reigns supreme. Yeah, fuck science. Okay, you're right. Yeah, fuck science. You go ahead and believe in God's will. See where that fucking gets you. I'm so tired of this. I'm so tired of this. Does he understand God's will? Love thy neighbor. Try and help your neighbor. Look out for other people. A vaccine would be doing that. You're being fucking selfish. Sure, it's your choice. Billionaires have a choice what they do with their money. They're not giving to charity if they're paying employees shit. They're fucking assholes. Sure, it's their choice, but they're still a fucking asshole. So fuck you, Cole Beasley. You're an asshole, an anti-science, uneducated prick. And I'd love to know what makes you think you know better than all the medical experts and scientists out there. What makes you think you know better? And you talk about, (laughs) there was another part in that, or maybe it was a different tweet. But He talks about the long-term effects of the vaccine. What about the long-term effects of COVID? Why don't you talk to Von Miller from the Denver Broncos? Fucking ask him. Ask him, Newton. 
We do not even know the long-term effects of COVID. <sighs> Fucking idiots. Assholes like this. But assholes like this exist because of people in power like Trump. who decide it's a great idea to peddle and push this uh, anti-science bullshit. And it's tr- it's funny because a lot of those people that push it are vaccinated. <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. None of this is surprising. None of it. Those in power have done a great fucking job at dividing us, you know? Republicans, Democrats, Democrats, I do believe, care more about equality, care more about the people in general, but everybody's just trying to save their own ass when it comes to politicians, that the Republicans are particularly terrible because they know that they can manipulate their base and they've done a great job of it. They know they can do it and they do it well. And that's why you have assholes like Cole Beasley. I don't even know if he's Republican, but a lot of that shit he's spouting is Republican mindset. And I know, I know there are some African-American players who also do not want to get vaccinated. Them I understand a little bit more based on some of the past history, a history of uh, how black people were, you can think of, I believe it's the Tuskegee experiment, but I can understand the hesitation, but still, again, Everybody just, I just wish they would look, I just. Sorry, I'm having a hard time. My blunts and my joint, my, my smokage keeps going out super quick tonight. Apologies. That's why it's, it's crazy to me how they still believe in these fucking leaders of theirs. After everything that's happened with Trump. He still has so many supporters. You can see since he's left office, he's done nothing but bitch about the election, peddle lies, take money from people that support him. The fraud stuff has come out about, you know, the election donations or his, you know, I mean, the Capitol riot stuff. I t- and now this news that, that with the QAnon. Yep, he's gonna be he's gonna be president again in August. Not if he's setting dates for a fucking tour with Bill O'Reilly, unless he somehow thinks he's gonna do that while president, which could be possible if Trump has it the way he wants it. And that's why I get worried. Not so much about Trump getting back into power. Someone like him, but smarter. Trump had a path to pull off some very Hitler-esque type shit. I just don't think he was smart enough. And maybe, I mean, I was going to say, I think his ego was too great for it as well. But Hitler's ego was big too. He made some massive, massive mistakes when it came to war planning. And in events that really helped turn the tide. And so, I, you know, I, I don't know. It's just, <laughs> and I know I do a lot of comparing Trump to Hitler, but I know fact this motherfucker likes him some Hitler because he has that book, Mein Kampf. He has that shit. <clears throat> yep. And you can just tell it. I had a checklist once of this shit. Checklist of like fascist, fascism, dictator type checklist. Trump hit almost every single one. And it's amazing to me that half the country neglected to see that. Part of it, uneducation. Part of it, they don't give a fuck. They love this 
prejudiced orange turd. It's insane. It's insane to me. It. <laughs> I thought we were kind of all on board with that shit. But, you know, even for me, it's it's been weird. I talk about how, you know, I grew up with a lot of diversity. My second friend in life ever was a Korean dude named David. Uh, his grandparents lived in the same apartment complex as us. There was a townhome complex. <laughs> but, uh, and so David would come visit his grandparents and, my, you know, my dad knew the grandparents and um, met the dad and talked with David's parents. And, you know, David would occasionally come hang out with me. And it was great because we were both into basketball. I think I've talked about this before, but. And um, just went from there. I had Chinese friends I did, in, in middle school. My two best friends were a new Hindu guy, just like a poo from the Simpsons. No shit, but a new. He had the mole on his face and fucking everything. As a matter of fact, this fucking asshole, we used to give each other shit all the time, but this asshole, he would get made fun of it because it literally was like not only did he look like a poo, but his name was a new, which is one letter off of fucking a poo. So this guy wants to end some of this uh shit talking, so he decides he's going to cut his fucking mole off. So he comes to school one day with a bandage over where the mole is. And I'm like, oh, you fucking didn't. You didn't tell me you didn't. I did. I tried cutting it off. <laughs> you fucking idiot. <laughs> like, you're going to get my fun of 10 times more now, you know, for trying to cut it off. You should just leave it be. And he did. He did. Man, he got railed for that. Sorry, I got the J on a roach clip now. So there's going to be a little sound here and again. But, uh, and then my other friend, we, we called ourselves Triple Trouble. It was me, a poo, I mean a new, and this dude named Adrian. And he was half black, half Asian. And I say Asian because I'm not entirely sure. I want to say his mother was Japanese, but she could have been Chinese or Korean. I don't really remember. It was a long time ago. And back then I wasn't so good at telling the difference. You know, I still struggle sometimes, but there are differences in the Asian ethnicities or races. No, Asian would be a race. There you go. <laughs> but there, there, there is a difference. And I'm just not sure which one his mother was. So he was half black, half Asian. And man, we had the best of times the best of times we uh we used to just hang out and listen to metal get stoned listen to metal we take walks through the park we go down to the creek get stoned there play in the playground we would go to the mall sometimes but I'm, i know i'm speaking of lame shit that's because i'm stalling to try and remember the <laughs> Because I feel like I got two funny things about our relationship, but I'm trying to figure out, feel like there's some other stuff leading up to that. But anyway, we used to have sleepovers, obviously, as most uh, young peeps do. And um, one time, one time, we stayed the night at a news house and his dad, very strict, very, you're a fucking the new, you get your shit together. Like, hardcore on poor new and a new pissed him off and so we railed him and he still let us stay the night but he's kind of dick and a new was upset so he wanted toilet paper his own house to get back at his dad and me and adrian thought it was the funniest shit but of course we're gonna tp the house right <laughs> so we do and in the morning his dad's pissed problem is for us, we had to clean it up. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Anu. But at one point in time, when Anu and Adrian knew they could uh, trust me, when we officially became triple trouble, 
And it wasn't just, hey, I knew an Adrian and the, and the white guy are hanging out. Because uh, I was not a very popular kid. Adrian, I knew wasn't really either. He got fucked with a lot. But like Adrian was a little more popular. Some guys wondered why he would hang out with us. But we were, we were, we were all cool, man. We had a nice little crew. There's this dude named BJ. And you always called him Blowjob. <laughs> but he was a heavy kid. Heavy redhead, heavy ginger. And uh, I thought he was cool, but he, he would always try and hang out with us and be like, come on, let me join your clique. We're going to be called quadruple trouble. <laughs> nice kid, though. Good kid. But uh, once they knew they could trust me, Anu and Adrian, they introduced me to the candy house. Now, this was a house owned by the owner of a vending machine company and he kept stock for his vending machines in his garage and he had a door a side door to the garage that was always unlocked he was away every day and at home was his wife an asian lady and again i say asian because i'm not sure long time ago and so one of us in the crew would go to the door it'd be a different person every time one of us would go to the go to the door and ring it wait for the wife to answer and start as is paul here is david here no no here no here they no live here and distract meanwhile the rest of us would go in to the garage with backpacks and shove our backpacks full of candy bars, soda gum, mints, chips, cigarettes even. Back in those days, I'm, I'm a little older. Back in those days, they had cigarettes in vending machines, okay? So, it was a blast for a while. Eventually, we got caught. We show up one time. We do our normal routine. This time, we end up meeting up with another group who was going to hit the candy house too, Anu or Adrian or both of them knew the guys. And so we all decided to hit it once. And that was probably a good thing because one of us goes to the front, talks to the wife. Meanwhile, the rest of us sneak in the garage. We're in the midst of stuffing our bags. When another door opens, the one leading from the garage to the house, and it is an angry white dude what the fuck are your kids doing? Here? Get the fuck. And everybody takes off. Thing is, everybody dropped their goddamn bags. Everybody left their shit behind except for me. I took my bag full of baby Ruths. And I took it home. And when everybody was like, give me candy bar, give me candy bar. I'm like, fuck you. Shouldn't have dropped your shit. And I took my baby Ruths. I, of course, eventually gave one to new and Adrian. But I had a bag full of baby Ruths. And I'm like, this is my prize for the last stop at the candy house. Mm. But I've always, I've, I've always, and I think that's part of the problem is some of these people who got a problem with diversity, minorities, <clears throat> even women, even gays, the LGBTQ community, you know which is celebrating. Why be so prejudiced? Well, for a lot of them, they were probably raised in an environment of those beliefs. And when it, the earlier when I was talking about the Confederacy, it's almost as if the losers of that war, the Confederacy that just a chunk of them just continued to pass down these beliefs that one day the South will rise again. It's just so crazy. Because <laughs> you won't. You just won't. You just won't get your ass kicked again. Again. But there's so much of that stupid shit on the right, at least the far right. Like how... How do you have a don't tread on me flag and 
a Blue Lives Matter flag. Explain that one to me. Explain. Great contradictions of the right. And they call themselves the right for a reason, because they say they are right. Though in fact, they rarely are. <laughs> it, it blows my mind. People are still buying into their shit after everything. After everything. And like I said, I get it. Because part of it is probably that just handed down repressed anger towards minorities, blacks, and anyone trying to take power away from the whites. Brainwashed fuckers. But they're so keyed in on those beliefs that have been just handed down that they ignore, sh they actually will defend their politicians like what, like Matt Gates. Do fucked with an underage girl. Yet, you hardly hear anything from his followers, Republicans, about him. If that was a Democratic president, I mean, part of the whole thing with the QAnon and, and this pedophile ring, right? All, all about saving the kids, I thought. They don't, unless it's Matt Gaze or, or another Republican, right? Contradictory as fuck. They, they preach God, but ignore so much shit in the Bible. How about love thy neighbor? I, it's like you pick and choose which parts of the Bible you want to. <laughs> oh, and they call people like us sheep. And they're worried about people about the government, people in power manipulating elections. But that's exactly what their leaders are doing. The Republic, like in Georgia and other places, altering the voting rights in, in a way that makes people say, oh, yeah, yeah. These are voter integrity type laws. Oh, yeah. When they're really voter suppression. I saw one comment on Twitter where a guy was like, yeah, well, allowing more people to vote or something like that it is essentially election fraud. And it's like, what? How is it? Shouldn't we want every person to have their voice heard? Shouldn't we make it easier for everybody? I've explained this before. In other countries, it's a lot. Voting is mandatory. You can even be fined for it. But here, we have to fight for it. They <laughs> just blows my fucking mind. But it doesn't. You know, it's crazy. Because it, on the one hand, it really isn't all that fucking surprising. Tea. Got some tea for the tea party. <laughs> but it, it, it I don't know. It's crazy to think about all these fucks that truly believe in this shit. You got people that actually believe. Healthcare is not a right. They've been, I mean, it's a privilege to have healthcare. It's such an asshole way to view things. Like, no fucking wonder the aliens fucking hate us. <laughs> like, 
<clears throat> excuse me. I really feel when you read shit like about the, the aerial school in Zimbabwe, it feels like, man, the aliens are trying to help us. And then we just kept fucking shooting at them and trying to bring them down. And they're like, OK, fuck these people. But it's like they still show up to keep an eye on us and try and keep. I don't know. I want to know how it goes. I don't think we'll get a whole lot from that UFO report from the Pentagon coming up, but uh, we'll see. It's no wonder, though. As I've said before, we're the black sheep of the universe. There's a lot crazier shit out there than we know. And we're kind of the black sheep because we're fucking assholes to each other. We're assholes to the other species. The kind of, hey, how's it going? <laughs> okay, fuck you. We're leaving. <laughs> Aliens want to check out Earth. They're like, yeah, yeah. Where are you going, Brad? Where are you going for vacay? Tell you what, Tommy. I'm going to go check out Earth. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I went there a few years back. It's not bad. Not, not You know, a lot of nice sites. A lot of nice sites. Cool stuff to check out. Right, they, they got some pretty good drugs there. They got some pretty good drugs. Uh, but you really, if at all possible, want to try, try to avoid uh, uh, just the locals. <laughs> Keep a low profile. <sighs> It really does feel like the U.S. is going to shit. The DS, the divided states of America. Too many people, a lot uneducated, some with bigotry running through their veins. They just, you know... further causing a rift and those they trust in, those in power they believe in, are manipulating them, furthering this divide. And it's worse than it's been in a while. I know, you know, racism has really never gone away. These issues obviously have never really gone away, but can tell by the treatment of, of black people by police. You can see how this shit goes. I, I personally, I thought shit was a lot better till Trump came around. Now, maybe it was a little bit before that. I started getting a little more woke. <laughs> but it, I really was kind of like, you know, I've had a lot of different you know, non-white friends in my life. And I, I think because of that, I never viewed it as an issue, as big of an issue anymore, be, because, uh, you know, but the Colin Kaepernick situation in football really opened my eyes to how much hatred and bigotry was really still out there. And then obviously Trump and you got, <clears throat> I remember when shit first started and yeah, just young black men just randomly being found hanging from trees and just scary shit. And you got the protests going on and assholes driving into protesters. And that's, it's just like, uh, fucking humanity. The divided states of America. Oh, yeah. Wife and I talked about just fucking going to Canada. Because <laughs> it would, it, it might not be a bad idea to get the fuck out of here at some point. Because <laughs> you feel like, no, I want to, I want to stay. I want to be here. I want to be a part of the change. I want to be part of the solution, right? Help get this country back on track. But <clears throat> I think we're so far from that. In Canada, I mean, they got free health care. They have legal marijuana. They, I mean, 
it, w- it wouldn't be so bad. You get a passport. Obviously, you got to get a passport to be <laughs> But I mean, bring your ass to the U.S. for if you need to do some shit, see some shit, come to visit. Besides, I'm, I've been talking about this like, man, it's been kind of high here in Colorado. It ain't been that, like, I feel like Everywhere is just going to get hotter and hotter. And until we start doing something about climate change, until we do enough to make a big enough impact, it's just going to keep getting hotter. And it's scary. So I feel like a place like Canada is like the perfect fucking place to go. Because I'm looking for somewhere I could smoke weed, right? And out of all the countries that I would consider moving to, that's the one that has free weed everywhere. <laughs> and again, yeah, it's cold and that kind of sucks. But that's where you're going to want to be, I think, in the coming years is a little bit of a colder climate. Of course, this is another thing some people don't believe in. God's will, as Cole Beasley said. <laughs> God's will. Fuck global warming. If God, that's just God saying it's time to end. <laughs> Pretty sure Canada is, Canada does not want us. But Canada, I'm not bad. I've never bashed Canada. I've always liked you guys. Although I, I will admit. I like I, I do laugh at South Park's representation of you. <laughs> I do find that hilarious. But hey, maybe I just got to make it in like stand-up comedy first. I just you know, I know it takes a lot of people a little bit longer, but you know maybe I find a way to just catch on fire <laughs> real quick and then make some money, make a name for myself, and be like Canada. Would you like a hot, brand new comedian? (laughs) Because I currently reside in the divided states of America. And I hate this fucking place. (sighs) Don't worry. I'm not going anywhere yet. I'll be a resident of the divided states of America for quite some time. I do imagine. (laughs) With that said, I'll try and make the best of it, you know. Try and chase that American dream, right? Stand-up comedian, entertainer. Yes, we'll try that. I'm also going to try and enjoy the summer. uh, Before summer gets too hot to enjoy. (laughs) My brother's coming out later this summer. That's going to be fun. We're going to hit up the Renaissance Festival. Very excited about that. It'll be my first time getting out and going to really a large gathering, you know. Luckily, it'll be outside. I imagine there'll still be plenty of people wearing masks. So I think it'll be fine. I think it'll be fine. And I'm excited. We didn't get to go last year. And uh, obviously. But I love the Renaissance Festival, you know. It's a blast. Big fan. Big fan. My favorite part, one of my favorite parts it's the tomato guys, where you go, pay some money, get some tomatoes. A guy, man, so many feet away, has his head in his hands through a board, and you throw tomatoes at him. And the entire time he talks shit to you. doesn't matter. You can be a five-year-old girl, and he will run you down into the fucking ground. It is fantastic. Uh, and, of course, they have lots of different you know, shows there and, and the big jousting tournament which is like fake but it's it's still fun fun to watch so yes the good old red festival yes yes red fest here we come in about a month in about a month so i'm excited for that just try and enjoy the summer mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and you should do the same you should do the same and do it safely you know as always as i always say 
stay safe, stay vigilant, and stay mad. Because again, all the best of us are, you know? All the best of us are. And also, as always, much love. Because we're going to work on getting the fuck out of here. Getting the fuck out of here. Out of here. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed the show, the pod. Thanks for joining. Again, much love. Have a great week. Until next time.